News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clambo. And we broadcast on TV1, which of course is a proud member of the Capital Maharaja Group. And uh, this morning, it was wet again. Yes, yes, uh, it's not all uh, tropical island. Well, it is tropical. It's raining a bit, so do take care when you're out there. But uh, talking about uh, tropical islands and so on, and uh, this so-called tropical utopia, uh, democratically driven, um, I thought we'd, uh, we'd listen to uh, a few uh, sayings from that wonderful man, also known as the Auditor General of the Republic of Sri Lanka, Dr. Gamini. And uh, we've got with us a guest this morning who will also ask, uh, answer, or try to answer a question as to what has happened. We waited an hour, or one year and a half, a year and a half, for local government polls, thanks to uh, the antics of the Minister of Local Government, uh, Provincial Councils, uh, Mr. Faisal Mustafa. And then it's now four months since that results of the local government poll. So to find out what exactly has been the benefits for the people of our country, we have here a representative from one of these local councils, Mr. Keshlal Gunasekra. Good morning to you, Mr. Gunasekra. Good morning for us. That's right, isn't it? We waited one and a half years. Allah. Some of them, of course, I, you agree, I, I agree with you. Some Allah, of them Allah Faisal Mustafa, we waited. And um, he'll be here soon to explain his uh, tragic role in all this. Uh, but what about you? In, in what, fairness to him, I must say yeah. that... There is uh, a fairness? In, in fairness to him, I must say, oh. because uh, the law was changed by the previous regime. Right. But they did not go through with the subsidiary uh, procedures that had mm. to be followed to bring the law to fruition. And, the, and as a result, there was this delay, inordinate delay. Right. And then now it's four months after that epic battle. Yeah. Uh, several television appearances. Uh, columns and columns of newspaper space. Later, the elections were held, right. and a um, um, uh, result of sorts, but a drubbing for the main two parties. And what is the benefit? What has happened? What, what have the people benefited from? Have you, are you collecting in your area, and David Lamartini, is the garbage being collected? Are the drains being clean? Are the beaches being swept? What, 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 what are the benefits for the people? There are several benefits uh, for us, but before I answer that question, uh, I like to, uh, in fact, bring to the notice of the audience as well mm. a very uh, a, a nice incident that took place before the elections. Yeah. Uh, I had this opportunity to address a uh, guest from the uh, the uh, U.S. Embassy, yeah. uh, because they, they wanted to know the changes with regard to the local authority uh, elections, etc. Right. And uh, the gentleman who was billed to speak was Rohan Hettiarachi, yeah. but he fell all of a sudden, he fell ill all of a sudden, yeah. and he entrusted the matter to me. Right. And when I went there, I realized there was a huge crowd of people mm -hmm. uh, who were waiting uh, to ask questions, etc. So I asked him, I said, before I make... Uh, my uh, case, I said I would like to ask now how many people in this audience uh, would say that uh, the inordinate delay with card holding of the elections yeah. was totally unjustifiable and if everybody raises their hand. All right. I said, yeah, fine, okay, now. I said, no, we are going to have elections in February. Uh, can you please tell me that through this process you'll be able to bring in good people? Please raise your hand. Nobody yeah. raised their hand. I said, right. there lies the problem. I said, we all, we all fight for elections, but uh, no sooner the election is over, yeah. we feel, realize that we are unable to feel uh, good people to those positions. And that is exactly what has happened in this country. And that so, is exactly what will continue to happen in this country. This is criminal wastage, really, it, isn't it? Some, to some degree, yes, criminal wastage. Shall we listen to the um, Auditor General of Sri Lanka? Uh, we've got a clip from uh, what he has to say. It's about the same thing. Yeah. But um, he is the Auditor General. Yes. Um, so, Control Room, could we have you play those clips, please? 
It has been three years, but they have been unable to bring in the audit bill, which was part of the 19th Amendment's efforts to bring about fiscal discipline. I speak about other people's assets, but over the past two years, we've been spending 2.2 million a month, and we can't do anything. It is clear, and everyone knows, that a majority of the funds allocated through the budget goes to waste. The entire budget document is defunct. In 2016, they allocated 1.2 or 1.3 trillion as capital expenditure. However, they only spent 500 billion, which is around 50 percent. Abey vidhan kalle thune 500 billion. See, ita pan hai vidhan kalle thune. Sampoorne me vikarna hai, vikarna nee, vikarna kadi pati varay agi vapasare pavi viking yad kiri me. State institutes have been turned into companies with the aim of removing the auditing process from the purview of the Auditor General. Through this, they have committed numerous acts of fraud and corruption. The best example is the CEB, which has 20 companies under its purview. From among these companies, the Auditor General receives documents from about two or three. There are weaknesses even in the 19th Amendment. Another example is Sri Lanka Telecom. The government holds 50% of its shares. A further 2% is owned by the BOC and People's Bank. However, the Auditor General does not have the authority to audit this company because the 19th Amendment didn't include clauses to handle indirect ownership. There are hundreds of government-owned companies similar to this. Another good example is the coal company, which is under the CEB. It is clear that there were continuous malpractices. We have handed in the necessary audit reports, but they have not been taken up for discussion. We do not know the reason for this. We recently handed in a report about the Wildlife Department. We have clearly outlined what the wildlife department is doing about the elephants and other fauna. There are plenty of cases like the bond scam in Sri Lanka State Service. For example, the coal issue or the issues in the importation of rice. We have calculated that the country suffered a loss of 15 billion rupees. However, none of this is revealed as yet. This country has assets which are worth billions and trillions, which are not being utilized. The best example is the education department. Even today, buildings are being built. The number of students is declining. My school is the perfect example. When I was schooling, there were 1,500 students. However, there are only 500 students now. But whenever you go to a school, you will see a new building under construction. Why do they need so many buildings? Yet, they keep allocating resources because it is more profitable for people. The Ministry of Health has plenty of equipment which are unused. But today, these equipment are outdated. In some cases, machines have been provided to hospitals, but that hospital does not have any electricity connection. And that was the uh, Auditor General, Dr. Garmini Ujisinga, who's um, uh, speaking yesterday about that. Audit bill. The uh, budget allocation, state institutions um, that are owning the majority stake in companies, um, state institutions that have uh, registered under the Companies Act and uh, done in such a way to circumvent the eagle eye of the Auditor General's Department. Um, the uh, Lanka Coal Company, wildlife even, the bond, coal purchase, rice purchase, education expenditure. These is, this is what the Auditor General spoke of is today. One, two, three, four, I don't know, about six, seven items. Or maybe more. Or more. He's talking about wastage. Well, what's happened? Where is the commitment? Well, I think he's right, you know, fundamentally, because I, I, I agree with most of the statements made by uh, Dr. Garmini Vijay Singh. We need to yeah, understand. Yeah, but what are we doing, though? No, we, we, the question is this. We have no financial discipline. There's absolutely no financial discipline in this country. That is the saddest part. Whether it is a government department or a private sector entity, yeah. I, I do not feel that we have a strict financial discipline. And as a result, things go haywire. But and that is exactly what is happening. All you, know, over. you know, when we were at school, the teachers would say that you must lead with example. Mm. You know, and that was instilled. And so here, do, we th do, you, do you detect a lack of leadership here? Because 
right from the top, if we, have a, if we examine some of these things that Auditor General just spoke about, like let's say the bond. Now this was led right from the top. We had a Prime Minister who was intent on uh, providing cover an excuse uh, and succor to uh, a friend of his, Arjun Mahendran. It is the Prime Minister who put him in that place in the first thing and gave assurances and virtually undertakings to his colleagues in cabinet and to the newly elected president at the time that there would be no trouble, that he would manage. Well, it's one hell of a management, isn't it? Because they've robbed the central bank. They've they changed the system that was in place, uh, put in place by H.J. Wadner, and which the Auditor General admits in writing that that is the least cost methodology of obtaining funds. Because uh, obviously, okay, so you will know that the largest procurement that this country regularly undertakes is the procurement of money. And that's... Is and there is no no comparison to that and the next item. The second item is the importation of oil. Right? Correct. And it is, so that, 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 there's the lack of leadership. And so when you, when you come down the line, it's the same. We had some people in one of these local councils hitting each other. And, and uh, what, what was that chap doing? Lifting the table off and causing mayhem. What was he doing? Is he nuts? Is, is this the leadership? What does that say to all the children down further down the line? So it's the same because you, have, you talk about, <clears throat> sorry, you talk about financial mismanagement. So it started with the minister in charge of the central bank. And are you surprised? I'm surprised, all right. But of course, uh, you have to understand that uh, the central bank fiasco, I feel, in fairness to everybody, that the uh, there is no fairness, Mr. Ka Mr. Ka the, 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 the officials of the uh, central bank are also equally guilty. Yeah, in this exercise. Well, of course, so the, that, that is not something that, that, that was, people that official was that not one official. Uh, had to be he, several he was, officials, but he was he bank. was the main man. Sir, several, several officials of the public department, I feel, are guilty in this whole exercise. What about what, because, uh, what about the people? What about the commissioners? Even even even. Uh, to some degree, even the uh, uh, the public dep the department officials have to realize, even if their boss comes and says, do something that is wrong, you say, no, sorry, then I'm going to do it. Well, there you go. That is what Mrs. Deepa Seniviratna did. She wrote, and, and you know, not only did she object, but the gutty lady that she is, she wrote it down and on, on the official document, and that played a key role uh, in later investigations. So. You know, why aren't we, why aren't we fating her? Why aren't we saying, this is the kind of time? Perhaps somebody should ask her to enter politics. Do you think she'll remain clean and committed? Of course they will remain clean, but once yes, the does, does the system allow her to be there? No, the question is this, the system is on the wrong track, all right, all over the country. We have a serious problem where the government is not keen on putting systems in place, you know. That is why you, it allows people to rob, whether it is politicians or officials. They, it's, they, have been, they, they have been allowed to rob, rob. Why? Because we don't have systems in place. Now, in other countries, developed countries, you have systems in so place. So does that mean that if you forget to lock your front gate, that it's, you can't complain and somebody comes and robs you? Not that you can't complain, but there is a possibility. That that, you're loving, the police will say, that, well, you know, you're loving, loving people to come in, walk in, and I rob. I see, I see. So, so that, you have the, the systems in place. Yes, you have the systems in If place. you have the systems in place, but they've the changed systems the system. will change. But, Everything. Is, but here, they've changed the system. No, yeah, it's to some degree, I feel, we, we have a different mindset, you know. We in this country, we believe that what a minister says is a system. That's the law. No, that is what has gone that's wrong, wrong in this country. It? That's wrong. Absolutely wrong. You need, you need to understand that everybody needs to have a system in their, in their workplace. Huh? And if those systems may, may have to be installed by parliament. Yeah. But those systems must be in place. And nobody has the authority to change those systems. 
No individuals have the authority to change those systems. It's a parliament that can change the system, but by way of a vote. Do you think the Auditor General is safe in his seat? Well, everybody will be gunning for him. And they are. They are. And it's shamelessly Which led it by ministers. It is abs You know, the question is, in this country, you speak what is right, you have a problem. Yeah. You, you close your mouth and wait, you're okay, you're safe. But there are I, people now, the, who won't you, keep their mouth shut. No, the question is, yeah, there are people. Yeah. Now the question like is now, this network. Yeah, now the Auditor General's uh, statements, somebody has to take it seriously. Not look at it from a different point of view. What he's talking is facts. Yeah. These are absolute facts. So go by them and correct yourselves. If there's something wrong happening in your department or your ministry, correct it. That's all. That is what he expects, not anything else. He's not, he not running after people. He's saying, put your, put your house in order. You see, the details that are coming out from the Sri Lankan uh, inquiry, the so-called Sri Lankan inquiry, yeah, the yeah. presidential commission uh, in Sri Lankan, all, all these sort of uh, details coming out now. And it appears to me that this airline, apart from being a national airline, was being used as the tool of some of these people in power to enrich themselves and their friends and friends of friends. Uh, I mean, the, the, the CEO is, is uh, reportedly asking uh, for a settlement to exit from the board um, worth several millions of rupees. Uh, but the thing is, he in the past, he's also collected a performance bonus. What performance? It's been Sir. losing money. That's not Continuously. performance. Continuously. He's been part of it. I'm not saying that he's been at the beginning of it. But he's been part of it. So why should we pay? We, the people, why should we why pay? Why should them? the public pay? Yeah, for what? That's a nice the question. Yeah. And he wants six, um, six tickets to go back to Australia? If you came from there, you go back yourself. Or pay us back the performance uh, money. That, that's what he ought to do. You're right. So, so where does this end, uh, Kessler? What, no, no, the what question do you is, see? it all depends on whether the government is keen on putting the system in place. If the government is not keen, the whole country is in trouble. If you put systems in place, then everybody has to abide by that. That is what is crucial. You put systems in place, everybody has to abide by that. The president, the prime minister, the ministers, the secretaries, everybody. You see, there is this charge that um, <coughs> Mahindra Rajapaksa had uh, such a huge mandate and so on and that he was able to win the war and you know he could have traded on the, the euphoria the national euphoria and the national the sense of unity uh, with the announcement that you know hostilities had come to an end and that he basically threw that opportunity away because he didn't capitalize on that uh, and on the goodwill that the, the people would have had. Yeah. Uh, and he couldn't uh, care tuppence, and that, that was an opportunity lost there. And then, of course, this government, led uh, in the main by the United National Party, um, persuaded uh, uh, Sivisena to come in and all that. You know, all that's history. But they, had, they created for themselves another opportunity to put it right. And they traded on the people's frustration. They assured us, the people, that they are, they are for good governance, responsibility, accountability, transparency, and all these wonderful things. And with, they also implied that they knew what they were doing economically. So you could say that that is, can't you say that that's another opportunity lost? Because they promised. To some degree, I would say so. Do you know, so. That's another, op another opportunity. And so when, 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 how will these things, will they be self-corrected? What, what, what will happen? It, it all depends on whether finally the, the, the two leaders and parliament, the day they decide to put everything in order, things will change. If they don't decide, we will still continue to go down. We will start, we will continue to decline. It's going down south, isn't it? It's, it is definitely going. But it's going down south. It's going down the pan. Is it in a, ta is it in a tailspin yet? No, not yet. Not yet. It's heading there's always, down. There's always a possibility. We could end up as one of these uh, countries like Somalia. 
there is always a possibility yeah? because one fine day when everybody gets up yeah. they say the dollar is 250 or something like that you are in serious trouble <laughs> who knows that can happen the way things are going we do not have we do not have in our minds that uh, financial discipline is important in this country and try to save every penny that's what we learned those days in school well we no, are no, we, not interested in your those things now when uh, in the last government we had people like namal rajapaksa presidential son and all that who was able to at the over a telephone call the money cause, cause things like uh, fancy projects like a cricket stadium of a test class uh, cricket stadium to be built in the middle of nowhere right uh, lack of hotels around there uh, no proper uh, no internationally acceptable standard big enough hospital to deal with emergencies or nothing he was just dumped in the middle of nowhere but he was able to do this apparently with a few phone calls that's so where so there was an abuse of system that's it's absolute abuse of the system right so and in this in this government we have an fcid what are they doing people asking that question that's right what are they doing why is the why why has the prime minister conveniently 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 given the time the law and order uh, ministry for a quite a while to his mate sagal ratnayake why what is his scientific explanation for that for the failure well there's the they they obviously interfere they they yeah They it do make so. the call. It appears so that they have interfered. Well, it, it certainly appeared so. We had the IGP on the telephone, you know, suing some person on the call on a telephone call. And now there's all this consternation, constant, const consternation, consternation. Thank you uh, about um, uh, this this uh, uh, man in robes who's uh, been given a, a jail sentence, and whether or not he should be or shouldn't be um, uh, wearing his robes. Well, you know, what's the question here? Is the question shall we uphold the law or shall we not uphold the law of the land? What are we going to do? Well, we have to you have to uphold the law of the land. Yeah. That's fine. That's fundamental yeah. that everybody has to realize. Uh but this problem has arisen as a result of uh 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 certain allegations made by certain priest but this is not the first time that a priest has gone to jail yeah this is not the first time he has been sent to jail he, sent for to jail contempt for some... of court and for threatening mrs eknelly god yeah right that's that this has got nothing else to do with went... the other complaints correct about, against correct him. no what i what i'm trying to say is that there are so many others who have gone to jail so many other priests yeah. who have been sent to jail yeah. who spoke about them if that was there was a case who spoke about them nobody there were several priests who served jail sentences who spoke about them in which case i just very quickly as we come towards the end of the program prisoners also have human rights they agree yeah okay in that case uh under the constitution everybody is treated as equal correct right correct so on the one hand you have uh, a court who's jailing this uh, person for contempt and so on he's got a jail sentence allegation allegations against the yeah yeah but he's found guilty found yeah? guilty yes and he's been uh jailed mm-hmm. with his appealing and all that is a different is a different he's, a different, he's as we stand he's been convicted so on the one hand he's been given a sentence and The law of the land says you you are convicted you come in there and you wear the prison garb. That's natural. That's that's natural. On the other side you have this other expectation of being being able to be treated uh equally before the law. So human rights and so on. So prisoners also have rights. But is it right that because when he takes his when he's forced to take it all off then in 7 days time thereafter he ceases to be a monk or you know he's by default yeah 
So isn't that, I'm just playing devil's advocate, no, that's isn't, that, isn't, that, no. isn't that an infringement on, of his human S rights? I, I certainly agree with you, Faraz. That's what I said. This is not the first time. Yeah. There, have, there have been priests who have gone and served jail sentences before. Yeah. If this matter was raised at that particular time, I'm sure everybody would have gone into that and decided the course, best course of action. So what do you think the prison authorities are doing? Well, they need to understand that they have to uh, inform the department heads and the minister concerned that this here is a situation that we have to rethink as to what course of action that the prison authorities need to take. Maybe consult the chief priests, etc. And then... In the last government, we had, we had a situation where there was an inspired leak of, a, of an image of uh, the former army commander uh, in his prison garb. It was an inspired leak. We all know that. Right. So, are we likely to do the same? What's going to happen here? Is, well, there, is there another law in operation? No, it's, it's, it's not that. I feel that the, the government has to look into this aspect, study, and then dole out uh, the procedure that has to be followed with regard to a priest. That's all. If there has not been... Why waste time? We've already got the law. We've already got law. Why? Why? Now they're all going to sit down in committee. No, no. As in to what time he's to going whether, to be inside. As to whether he, sh he should be derobed. But that's not for the law to decide. That's that is for the law because, as far as the law is concerned, once you are in the inside the prison, you have to wear the prison garb. That's all. Yes, but that, whether the, whether that has a uh, 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 detrimental effect on other things is not really for the law to. To understand. No, it is because he, in this situation, it's it's a priest who has gone, yeah. and in all fairness, he has a right to say, "Look here, I cannot remove my clothes, uh, robe," which is right. He should have right. thought about that before he launched his attack inside that, the courtroom. That room. is a different issue. That is a different issue. He should have thought about that before he that went to around and tried oh, yes. to threaten Mrs. Oh, yes. Eckdelligoder. I mean, that that must be the reason why we have not had this uh, situation coming up earlier because people were not bothered, uh, I mean, they never expected priests to be doing things of, things of this nature. Yes, Bindi Sanayake was inside. Yeah. I suppose he must have been in his prison garb. Maybe he was in hospital most of the time. Whether he was in hospital or not, he must have had. If he's in hospital, he need not wear a jumper. Is it? Yes. What do you wear then? You have a prison uh, uh, hospital. Uh, hospital uniform, but that's hospital also hospital prison uniform. garb. Not, not to that degree, it's a hospital kit. I think it calls for us to go and, go and see these people in action inside the prison. Yeah. But, but in fairness, I feel uh, for us, he has a point. Somebody has to sit and decide. A lot of people have to sit what? and decide. But the law should... It's not the law. It's not the law. It's the a law. procedure that has to be followed with regard to a priest. That they're giving respect to the priest. How... Some, I, I use this argument as... Because you just, do something wrong that's... Just to debate it yeah. with somebody else here. Yeah. And that person said to me, listen, the priest lost his right to be a priest when he turned up and threatened another person. Yeah. But that, did you, did, have you seen that clip, the way he's abusing? I know. Uh, the, that, oh, it's government agent, I think. I know, I know. So from the municipality. In that, in that situation, yeah. it is the, it is the, uh, the priest, they are, they are um, chapter will have to decide the course of action. But the law can't be waiting for them. The law no, got to the law ahead. can go on its own, all right? Yeah. Then the law is delivered, that's all. Very simple. I think the law is being made uh, to be, what did they say? The law is an ass, they say sometimes. That is always. And, 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 and that's, this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to make a joke of all these things, make light of it, when they know that we must uphold the law and otherwise, and, and be disciplined. No, but otherwise, he, all these things you talk about. He will still con he will still serve the jail sentence. That what? is not in his right, in his guard. With how are you go how is he going to do it? Rigorous imprisonment, mark you. That was what it said. Yeah, I I suppose he will have to. He will have to serve his sentence, whether they're right or wrong. Right. Well, you know, on that note, I just I just thought I'll I'll play devil's advocate and see what we say about this. But the law is the law. The law is the law. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. You cannot bypass the law. Right. The law is delivered and he has to serve the sentence. The question is, what is with the, the robes or without the robes? That's the question. That's the question. 
That yeah. I think we'll have to discuss. We, 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 have to, we have to spend so much of time in all this. When there is the law, the law is the law, and that's it. And then he lost. It's like, the Islam, oh, here we go. Faraz is going to finish it in that way. We're going to have to finish it like this. If, does he have the moral right to be wearing the robes after what he did, which is to, to threaten Mrs. Ekdali Gordon? Yeah, but the question is, that matter should have been taken up by the respective chap chapter. And then, in that case, let me pose this last and final question, thought for the day. Does the Prime Minister have a moral right to be the Prime Minister in light of the box <laughs> On that note, that's it from Newsline. Take care. God bless. Thank you. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Thank you.